The world could be a better place if every feature in every data table were normally distributed. Why am I saying that? That is because for each feature we could generate new data just from two parameters, the mean of that feature and the standard deviation. Seeing is believing. For now, I am creating a function to draw two distributions or histograms side by side. I will call this function to show the original data distribution and the generated data distribution. If the original data distribution and the generated distributions are the same, then their histograms should look similar. Then I am writing a function called generate underscore data that will take a data set, which is the first parameter, and the number of samples to generate as inputs. The function will generate a new data set that has the same mean and standard deviation as the given data set. This function assumes that the given data set is normally distributed. Therefore, the generated data will be normally distributed following the mean and the standard deviation of the given data. Here, I have created an array with normally distributed numbers equivalent to a data table column. If I can create a model that can learn its distribution, we can easily sample from that distribution to generate real-looking data. Let's take a look at the distribution of the 1,000 numbers in the feature. The histogram shows that the data is normally distributed. We are considering that these 1,000 numbers are our original data. Since the world is a better place, and we have created this feature as a normally distributed feature, we just compute the mean and the variance of the feature data we have in hand to learn its pattern. That is what our generate underscore data function does. It takes an array of numbers, computes the mean and standard deviation, and then generates more numbers normally distributed following the computed mean and standard deviation of the original data. Let us draw the histograms of the original data and the newly generated data. They look almost exactly the same. That is because the world is an awesome place. Now consider that the world is a slightly skewed place. The data is no more exactly following a normal distribution. The original data is log normal and hence skewed. With an assumption that it is nicely normally distributed, we compute mean and standard deviation and hence generate the new data. The generated data distribution is now different than the original data distribution. That is because we considered that the world is a perfect place where each original data feature is normally distributed. The reality is even harsher than the original data being slightly skewed. It could have many modalities, multiple peaks and whatnot. So far, we have been only talking about generating one feature. The reality is that your data table may have thousands of features. Even if you only have two or three features, it is highly likely that those features will have relationships. Even though we may consider that the features are independent variables and do not have any relationships, the reality is that they have relationships. For example, if you have a data table that contains water amount, fertilizer amount applied in a crop field, and a column representing the crop harvest amount, it might seem like the water amount and fertilizer amount are independent of each other, and the harvest amount is the dependent variable that depends on the water amount and the fertilizer amount. The reality is that we may observe higher water and higher amounts of fertilizer in the same rows. How is that possible? The farmer who has enough money will provide a sufficient amount of water and fertilizer. Hence, there might be hidden affordability relationships associated with the two features, water and fertilizer. Given such relationships, even if each column is normally distributed in a perfect world, two features of the same row in the data should satisfy the hidden relationships. Those hidden relationships can be determined by correlation or covariance between features of the original data. Then that covariance can be incorporated into the generation process. Then the generated data can be shifted to target mean and variance. That is a lot of work and a lot of assumptions of normal distributions. In practice, we do not want to have many assumptions regarding data distributions. How about trying to learn without any assumptions of data distributions? Yes, 
As computer scientists, data scientists, or AI scientists and practitioners, we prefer neural network-based generative models, such as generative adversarial networks or diffusion-driven approaches to generate data. In the description section, I have linked two videos, one on generative adversarial networks and the other on a diffusion-based generative approach to generating tabular data. With the new AI techniques, we are hoping that the world will be a better place, of course, in terms of data.